Right. Japan. GameCube. Ooh. See, all of those are an issue. Haruna, Sogumi, Kogai, Sama, that's your island. Cool. If the PSP version is pretty good, I'd put that on PSP. If the PSP version gets, you know, is said to be as good as the console regular console versions oh by the way I've got a set um, oh you probably don't use it anyway if you're going to then we updated the uh, rally save mod if you even knew the rally save mod existed <laughs> there's a thing called the rally save mod where you can save r custom rallies to just press a button to get them back we use it for this, for the cat face. Um, We updated it to work on Australia. I'm definitely able to multitask and think about more than one thing at a time, I promise. Yeah, ADHD. I mean, ADHD is the reason that it's fixed, because uh, me and Vinyl spent ages... Uh, not Final, Phalex spent ages ADHDing and fixing it. And then uh, 
turns out we didn't need to, we just needed to go ask Desinoge for the code. Because we are dumb asses. Kind of heart, dumb of ass. You know, just decompiled the Unity mod. Spent ages decompiling it, trying to get it to work. Couldn't quite get it to work. Got it working enough, but um, we couldn't get the the overlay to work, the display. Turns out it was fucked when we actually finally got the code and we realised how much the decompiler missed. The reason we couldn't get it to work was not because the decompiler had kind of been slightly wrong about some stuff. That's fixable. It had missed things. We were supposed to have some extra variables being pulled from somewhere. And yeah, there was no way we were going to work it out. So we fixed it now. And it's official. It works. Rather than... Slightly broken. <laughs> actually has code. Nice. I love it when you get a nostalgic menu. The weird thing for me is so many games from my childhood I still play. I don't actually have very many nostalgic memories that I can like go back to and go, wow. Because like Minecraft, never stop playing it. World of Warcraft or Diablo would probably be nostalgic, because I haven't seen those in a while. Guild Wars 2 maybe at this point, because I haven't actually played it in ages. I just haven't bothered. It runs like ass every time I set it up. I spent ages setting it up and then it runs like ass, I've just given up. But like Trackmania, maybe some. May, actually, Trackmania, uh, Mania Planet Three would, because I didn't play much Trackmania after Mania Planet Four came out. That was kind of, and then back when I went back into it, it was the whole thing around Trackmania Nations Forever. More people playing Nations Forever than TM2, so I ended up playing United and Nations Forever. I am really bad at driving this car, but also Japan in the wet is difficult. Yeah, oh, there's probably a few PS1 games actually that could. Probably F1, uh, F1 19... I think it was 1997 or 1998 on the PS1. Played that a fair bit. But no fit Colin McRae and No Fear Downhill Mountain Biking can't because I picked them up. Um, they were the first things I picked up when I found out about emulators. So they probably get they probably did give me nostalgia at the time. But I think that might have been overpowered by learning about emulators and stuff like that. But also, I got a PS2, 
I don't actually remember any PS2 games I played on the PS2. <laughs> we, we got a PS1 when the PS2 was out. We got a PS3 when the PS... Uh, got a PS2 when the PS3 was out. I never got a PS3. Um... Because I moved over to the 360 during that console era. But I had an original 360. <laughs> Just to make things extra spicy, had an original 360. During the time where the... Uh, where it was the final generation and the X... I got the 360. Black Ops 2 was already out. That was one of the games I got for it. Yeah. Yeah, it's stuff like that. The thing is, it's got to be something that you actually played a lot. And the problem is, I can't remember what I played a lot. And Rayman doesn't give me nostalgia. I, I, maybe if I played Rayman. But I've watched a few Rayman streams and they don't really do much for me. I do sometimes hear the... In my head at random times of the night. Just wait. Why car just disappear? <laughs> hey, have a nice time. Type adge if you got an ad. Or don't, because I don't actually have the emote. Type sag to see Donkey Kong. Type Joel to look like an idiot because I don't have Joel. I should get Joel. Maybe I'll just get Joel. -er. Maybe I'm not fast enough to Joel. -er. I don't think I actually play any games fast enough to be able to Joel. -er. I certainly can't Joelist. Oh yeah, orange arrows. Yeah. I know which team you mean. I can't remember if it was called orange arrows, if orange actually had title sponsorship, but yeah, orange sponsored the arrows team. I can't remember if I played in F1. It didn't matter in F1. 29, uh, no, why do I keep trying to say 2019? 1997. Didn't matter in that game. Also didn't matter because I was a kid and shit, but and did time trials and that was it. I used to just put the game into practice mode, put wear all the way up, so you got realistic wear, fill the tank with fuel and just drive until the tyres wore out, and then just replace the tyres. Yeah, yeah, if you've been, if you've been playing as uh, Ferrari or Benetton, you'd have been winning, clearly.
don't look up who won the championship that year because uh, if Arrows did win the championship, I don't think they did. I'm pretty sure that was the year that Arrows died, actually. And Benetton might not have even existed at the time. It was somewhere around there that the last privateer teams went off the face of the planet. So there's a good chance that Arrows was dead. No, not at all, you were six. Or that you're just bad at video games. I was playing, uh, playing No Fear Downhill mountain biking when I got that handheld console thing. And I was looking at all the tracks and I got through the first set of the tracks. And I was like, I don't remember these, the second half of these tracks pretty much at all. I probably just did time trial after a certain point where I got stuck. And then the race of the th of the second half where I didn't recognise the track the first race where I didn't recognise the track I got stuck on and had to redo it three times because <laughs> that game's brutal you got to go through either three or four rounds of 1v1s and if you lose you're back to the start you can't reset just that round you're back to the whole start but what I've realised you can do now is you can pause the game and restart if you pause the game before you get to the end and restart. So if it's a dead heat and you're not sure if you'll win, just restart. Don't risk the entire thing. Unless it's the first uh, first run of the game, in which case it doesn't matter. If it's the first run of the championship, then it doesn't matter. Drove snowmobiles and hill climb. What the fuck? Yeah, I think I've seen it. Yeah, there's a, there was quite a lot of snow action. I mean, action sports when we were kids. Action sports was the big dick thing. You know. Skateboarding. Snowboarding. Sean Palmer was on top. You had Sean Palmer, Dave Mirror. Uh, Tony Hawk, Matt Hoffman, Jackass, Bam, and uh, and all those guys. The X Games was fucking huge. X Games Ventura soon, which is pretty sick. Fuck off.
<laughs> I love it when you Google something completely, completely just off the wall, and you find something. I had that. I found a really, like, a Minecraft map I played years ago because I was looking up a Captain Sparkles video and for some reason, basically I'd, I'd seen the Captain Sparkles video I wanted to watch on my desktop and then I was going to bed so I was like loading it up on my laptop. For some reason, instead of going to YouTube and searching I decided I'd just search it, duck, duck, go. And it comes up, first result is, yeah, the, the video I wanted. Second result some fucking old ass Captain Sparkles video of a map that I played donkeys years ago. It's like sick. Snowcross Extreme. Let's Google this to see if it's the one that I could picture in my head. I don't think I ever played it. Snowcross Extreme. 2000, because they're all real pictures of real people, because I don't believe you that the PS1 could do those graphics. Yeah, that's the one I was kind of picturing, I think. Usually the hood is a good way to go by it, if you remember the hood. That's how I realised what version of Colin McRae I played as a kid, because I couldn't tell the difference in the menu screens, whether I played one or two. Uh, but then I saw the hood and I was like, that hood doesn't look right for Colin McRae 2, so it must have been Colin McRae 1 that I remember. Because those two games do look very similar in terms of everything. Except for the hood, which is a different design, and that's kind of often the case with those sort of things. You can only do so much with graphics, and especially sequels that came late into a console's development life cycle. They were they already knew how to use the hardware, especially for the 360. Like games at that point had gotten that good, and the only way to differentiate anything was with a completely different art style. Which is actually why Call of Duty's, I think, started looking different. It was because the 360 and PS3 lasted so long. Because they, they stopped being able to just make it look better. Oh, well, as long as you remember some specific detail about it. The funny thing is, in the UK, the snowmobile is kind of a mythical object because it's not the sort of thing you can have an indoor course for you know like we can do skiing because you can do carpet skiing and indoor snow uh, snow places so skiing snowboarding ice skating all doable here absolutely snowmobile can't really plonk that in a warehouse don't really fit. Although a vivid memory from uh, the ice rink that we used to go to was you'd 
go to queue up for... You queue up at the desk to get in first, and parents would pay, and you could look in the swimming pool, which was like a really warm swimming pool with a load of slides and stuff. Uh, and then you would go downstairs, and while you were waiting, like walk through a load of stuff and you'd be able to look out at these ski slopes and people skiing while you're walking I can't remember why there was a wait for something else there was a wait for something else then you go down into um, you go down somewhere and then you get to the actual ice rink with the skating and stuff and get your boots and all that and that was, uh... yeah, it was weird because you literally couldn't see the ice rink while walking to the ice rink at any point until you got to the point where you actually put your boots in and then you could look out the window. You guys just ride snowmobiles to school, don't you? That's like. You just get, get on your snowmobile and rip it over to school. Park it up and that's it. trying to think of some other stereotypes to throw at you <laughs> but I can't think of any of ridiculous lessons that you would have there aren't really that many Swedish stereotypes that I can think of other than the hot blonde girls which I mean that's not exactly a bad one to have and uh, the fact that it's covered in snow which isn't exactly false. <laughs> Gotta be honest, you've sent me some pictures of outside of your window during the winter. There's been some snow on the ground. I mean, you sent me a picture of you moving house. And there's a fucking, like, it's six inches. We'd have shut down the country for that much. Oh yeah, you have that thing where you can get a really slow car. See, that 25k an hour thing. I, s yeah. Does anybody do it? When you can get an e-bike, probably for less, not have to pay insurance or anything on it. And let's face it, you can make an e-bike go faster than 25k an hour, as long as you don't need the range. Like, as long as you don't need the range out of it. So I did have some fucker complaining on a bike ride. He was like, oh, I bought this, bought this uh, fucking e-bike, modded it so it'd go more than shit, don't want to do fucking 15 mile an hour, which is 25k an hour speed limit. <laughs> Ran it and rave him. He like, oh, right, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they do go quick, don't they, when you, when you mod them. He's like, yeah, yeah, but it only gets fucking like 10 miles now. I looked at the battery on it, it was like the size of your water bottle. Sticking out. Like, fucking no wonder! <laughs> you, f you throttle only riding it, rather than pedal assist riding it. So you're putting in bugger all effort, you're just literally running it like a motorbike. It's got a water bottle full of power. Are you doing 35k an hour? How do you expect it to last more than fucking 20k on that shit? Well, I'm pretty sure that those sort of e-bikes are only rated for like 40k, if that. 
at their actual genuine output, which is, you know, generally they expect you to do half the work. Wait, how do you, you can make these EPA tractors? I thought they just like came. You couldn't just make them. What, just put shitloads of restrictor plates on it or something? Or literally engine swapped? Because honestly, I think I've got the wrong idea of it if you can do that. Because I've got the idea of them as they all look like they're all one design and they don't massively look like cars for some reason I've got in my head that they look more like golf carts but I may have the wrong thing that you're talking about I might be thinking of the wrong thing it's the same sort of idea that you can get a car before you're 18 and all of that but it's, uh, yeah, you basically get a golf cart, glorified golf cart with four windows. Which, honestly, pretty good for learning, because uh, you can see. <laughs> it's got full windows, it's quite good. Put a limiter or something on the gearbox. Ah, oh, right. Shoebox. Love it. Gotta love people really wanting cars so badly as a status symbol that they'll either do something that's dangerous or shit. Because honestly, if you assume that you're not going to break the law with this thing, right? Which we all know is false, because everybody big bores their CBTs in this country anyway. Um, so you're not going to break the law. You're going to do 25. Or you're at the very least going to do 25 in the sort of places that you might get pulled over. Um, surely, that looks shit. Because I can pedal 25 on a bike without a motor just me bike all I need not even a downhill just as long as it's not uphill or windy or if it is windy it's coming from behind me and it's pushing me along but that's gotta look shit when I'm going past you with my rucksack on not even breaking a sweat and you're in your EPA tractor like So it's a car with a moped engine, or is it literally a car? That just happens to be about as fast as a moped. Because at that point, get a moped. Because you'll go, you'll go real speed faster. I'm being sent nudes. Are those things? Now, those things are fucking sick when they are real cars. Rather than what you're explaining with like the death trap plastic box engine sort of things. When those things are real cars, they're the only sort of car that makes any sense in a tiny city. But also, again, Get a moped, you will go real speeds faster because you can split lanes. Assuming that splitting lanes is legal, or at least that the cops don't pull you over for it in whatever country you're in. Also remember if you're in America or Australia that uh, 
different states have different splitting ratings and filtering laws. UK, legal. A, legal. B, safer. C, if you're in a car and you get overtaken by somebody splitting lanes, you're going faster because I'm no longer traffic. You don't have to deal with me at any point. I'm just going to get home a bit quicker. That's my reward for getting wet every once in a while when it rains. Yeah. I mean, have you seen... Do you have smart cars in over there? They're basically the same as that, except they've got really low power engines, to be fair, but proper engines, proper gearboxes, proper everything. They can do the speeds. They tend to be low power engines because otherwise if you probably have the engine weighing more than the rest of the car at some point. Um, but with the low the small size and the low power, they can do motorway speeds. They just and the fact that the other thing is the only reason a car ever needs to be more powerful than to be able to hit the speed limit. The only reason it needs to do that is um, to be able to, um, what's it, to be able to do the speed limit while carrying heavy loads or carrying a trailer and stuff like that. And a smart car can't do either of those things on it, so it needs to basically be able to barely do the speed limit. If it can do our uh, max speed limit 70, if it can do 75, then you're probably going to be still able to do 70 or at least 65 fully loaded. But they're decent. They're really decent. To be fair, the smart cars. Everyone laughs at them when they see them, but it's like, it makes sense if all you do is drive your car to work and nothing else. And the only reason for owning a car is driving to work and maybe doing the shopping. If you just need that and you don't need the second... Well, you get two people, but you don't need three or four people in the car. What's the point? Also, consider motorbike or pushbike because they are actually quite safe. <laughs> I love when people say, Oh, I wouldn't trust myself on a motorbike. I think I'd crash it. Well, I don't trust you in a car then. Because I think you will crash it. You have just said that you cannot handle a vehicle. I don't think you should have a car. <laughs> the only time it's valid if someone is if someone doesn't actually understand how a bike works and they don't realise that they just balance themselves once they're moving. And when they're not moving, you put your foot down. And if you do crash it, you're a tosser because you didn't put your foot down. <laughs> Especially on a moped with a flat floor or a scooter. Uh, nah, Fiat 500 is not a smart car. Smart cars are smaller. Smart cars are two-seater. Fiat 500 is, I'm pretty sure, a three-seater, uh, a four-seater. Smart cars are like, they're the size of that moped car that you showed me. They have, they have the barely legal, um, barely legal length of wheelbase to make it practically square on the wheelbase front. Nothing behind or in front of the wheels, like literally that's the end of the car. Um... The older ones used to be a bit dangerous because they actually had nothing between you. Now they've got a bit bigger because they realise that if you put something in front of someone, it's safer. Because if they do have an impact, obviously, there's nothing. Because even motorbikes have something in front of your feet if you have a front-on impact. Because your feet go behind you or below you. So you have some bike in front of you. Whereas those cars, you were literally, if you had an impact, it was pretty much straight to your feet. Uh -huh. 
I did see one smart car type thing that uh, did it backwards, made the car backwards. So in front of it was like engine under you. In front of you was uh, the boot, which meant that you had that crumple zone. So you built the crumple zone as the boot, and then uh, not a lot behind you, but you know enough enough of a crumple zone <laughs> kind of thing with fuel tank behind. I guess it'd be fuel tank behind you or whatever. If you get rear-ended by a truck in anything, you're pretty, pretty fucked, to be fair. Pretty much anything getting rear-ended by a truck's not going to end well for you. Although, to be fair, the lighter your car, potentially the better it would be. Because if you get rear-ended by a truck in a smart car, you're probably going to keep moving, whereas if you get rear-ended by a truck in, I don't know, this car. This is a pretty classic British car, the Ford, uh, I've forgotten what car this is. What car is this? Why does my car disappear? But yeah, you just get pushed away rather than, you know, even something like this is going to get hit and potentially the handbrake's actually going to be able to hold. But I would honestly say that if you get rear-ended by a proper truck, I'm not talking like a pickup truck, I mean like a, a truck truck, like a lorry. If you get rear-ended by one of those, you just get pushed away. And you're definitely tall enough to not get sucked under it or anything. That'd be daft, you're not going to get sucked under them. Focus, that's it. Ford Focus. Not as good as the Ford Prefect. Perfectly common, normal person's name. There is nothing wrong with a Mr. Ford Prefect. That joke just slowly but surely over time is getting... I don't know if better or worse, but it is effectively like it just works because yeah nobody suspects a Ford Prefect I had to have it explained to me when I first heard it explained properly my dad was like yeah Ford Prefect was a car <laughs> um, that's why it's funny I do feel like I could absolutely do a Pangalactic Gargle Blaster though. It's one of those days. I don't do drugs or alcohol, but some days I just feel like a Pangalactic Gargle Blaster would be the correct option. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It's very cool. Uh, there's a geezer in it. No spoilers, because this is literally the start of the thing. Called Ford Prefect. Uh, he's an alien. And he comes down on Arthur Dent, and Arthur. Arthur's pissed because. Okay, spoilers for the first chapter, but like I don't think that's really spoilers. Arthur's pissed because they're bulldozing his house to make a new uh, bypass, and so he's tried chaining himself to the front fence and that sort of thing. Um, whereas Ford Prefect is pissed because he's been on Earth for a little bit, and. He's um, they're, they're they're bulldozing Earth, the entirety of the planet, to make way for an intergalactic highway. You see how these things cross. And then the events of the film prevail. And I don't think it's spoilers either to spoil the ending of the book. Which is that the answer to life, the universe, and everything is 42. 
Now, if you want to, go listen to or read or whichever way you consume that sort of thing, the first book, and then realise that the second one is incredible as well. So long and thanks for all the fish. And the third one. They're all good. They're very good. In the beginning, the universe was created. This has been widely... This has made a lot of people very angry and has been widely regarded as a bad move. It's just great for things like that. I might listen to it again. It's good. It's a good, good set of books. Good set of books. Would highly recommend. Highly, highly recommend. I don't recommend books very often, but... The only things I would recommend if you're if you have kids and are considering reading them Harry Potter, don't. Percy Jackson, actually really good. Uh, way better, in fact, in my opinion. I listened to and kind of cared about the Harry Potter books. But the Percy Jackson books have somehow stuck with me despite the fact that I only read some of them a little bit and didn't really care. And if you like Harry Potter, and hate the fact that they bastardised the movies, they also bastardised the Percy Jackson movies, but to a more funny extent, and to a better extent where the movies have kind of become their own. They can, they can, the movies can stand alone with Percy Jackson, rather than... They're, they're more an adaptation of the book, whereas by the end of Harry Potter it was an adaptation of Harry Potter, but it, it was supposed to be the actual books and people can still be pissed that they missed things and that the plot kind of is completely different. But, uh, yeah. I should put my skirt back on. I thought someone was at the door so I uh, took my skirt off and put shorts on. Yeah, yeah, it's like completely different. That's the thing. It's it's set in the same universe levels of different. It really is. Really is like set in the same universe levels of different. The funny part is watching the second Percy Jackson movie where some of the things that happened in the first movie happen in the second movie, but some of the things that happened in the book that didn't actually happen in the first movie, happen. And it's like, oh well that happened, but we didn't talk about it in the first movie because it just wasn't that exciting. Just like, you know, as it goes. <laughs> 39, 32, 9, 52. Lovely one. Cheers, Turbo.